So we're in this series called Grace for Your Race, and I will go, and I'll do some on the board, and I'll just, I like teaching. Somebody say teach. teach. Okay, pastor, what's the difference between preaching and teaching? I've said this before, but you need to know this. Teaching is explaining, preaching is proclaiming. It's a good tweet. Somebody shout it out. Teaching, teaching. is explaining. Preaching, preaching is proclaiming. Is proclaiming. In other words, when Jonah was told to go preach to Nineveh, not teach, go preach to them in 40 days. If you don't repent, God is going to destroy this place. Go proclaim, Jonah. Go to Nineveh, Jonah. Go proclaim as my prophet. God says, if you don't repent in 40 days, he's going to destroy Nineveh. And the awesome thing about Nineveh, not only did the people repent, not only did the people believe Jonah or believe God, Guess what they did? The king believed him. And when the king believed him, the king called a, he called a fast. And because fasting is one of the ways you chasten yourself. One of the secrets to fast, everybody listen up. Everybody look up here. One of the secrets to fasting is it's a way you chasten yourself before God has to chasten you. A number of people, I rarely hear people say that. One of the benefits of fasting is when you decide to den deny yourself food, abstain, and really focus on hearing God and repenting, it's one of the ways you are chastening yourself so God does not have to chase you, chasten you. Everybody got me? Now, what I want to talk about today, grace for your race, I want to get to, and I had Pastor Simi and I had Brother Jeff last week up here, and I shared something that I want us to say over and over again. Here's the first big point. Here's the first big point. The first big point. What you, they told me use my, my marker sideways, believe, B, E, the I before the E, except after C. What you believe. So the title, the series is Grace for Your Race. Now, 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 here's the title. Here's the title. Here's the title now. Now, now we want to deal, I want you to understand how this thing works. I want you to understand how this thing works. How does it work? This, the only thing that separate people, only thing separate people, only thing separate people, only thing. Why am I saying over, over again? Teaching requires repeating things. Teaching re requires saying over and over again. My goal is not to give you a bunch of stuff that you can go talk at the water cooler to impress people. My goal is to raise up wise and understanding people whose other people see that their God is pretty close to them. When they pray, it seems to get answered. When they ask for healing, they seem to get healed. So in other words, Deuteronomy, which our whole ministry is based off the Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 through 8, he says, this is your wisdom, the word of God. He says, if you will do this, the people will see God close to you. The people will see God moving in your life, and they will begin to see what God is as close to these people as their God is as close to them. I used to think religion, religion, what's religion? Repeatedly doing religious things without any manifestation. What's manifestation? Without any evidence that what you keep doing on a daily basis works. So in other words, I go to church, but I never become the church. Or I'm in hearing the message, but I don't apply the message. And what, what happens when you hear the word, there's a tendency in James, he says, if I hear it and don't do it, I deceive myself. Because evidently there's something in humans that when we hear something, we think we are doing something. But the truth is, when you hear it, if you don't apply it, it's called de deception. In other words, I'll start thinking I'm doing it. I'll start thinking I'm living it. And I won't even let anyone else tell me any differently. So what God wants to do is raise up pastors in Jeremiah. He said, I'm going to give you pastors after my own heart that are going to feed you with knowledge and understanding. What I want to talk about today, the key. Whew, if I can get this one. I think one of the leading causes of death in the United States, leading causes of death in the United States, leading causes of death of people's vision, leading causes of death in marriage, leading causes of death, children not honor their parents, leading cause of death when it comes down to employer-employee relationship, a immediate cause of death when it comes down to community and law enforcement not getting along. One of the number, number one, 
top causes of death, heart disease. Heart disease. Solomon, one of the wisest people on record, God told him, he says, I'm going to give you so much wisdom because you didn't ask for it. And you wanted to have knowledge. You wanted to have understanding so you could lead my people well. You, you've asked such a great question, Solomon. You didn't ask me for riches. You didn't ask me to kill your enemies. You didn't even ask me for long life. And because you didn't ask me these things, when I gave Solomon an open heaven, I gave Solomon an open heaven, he sacrificed thousands of bulls, and then God came to him in a vision. He said, Solomon, ask me what I can give you. Now I want you to put yourself, because sometimes we spiritualize people. What will you ask God if he comes to you? What an open heaven. How many of you all would have guns pointed at your enemy? How many would say, I want long life? How many would say, give me riches? Solomon didn't say either. He said, oh, Lord, this is where humility. Somebody say humility. God exalts the humble, and he humbles the proud. God raises up the humble, brings low the prideful. Now, pride is unique, and you don't always catch it. Pride is kind of like the stealth bomber. It's a plane that was supposed to be undetected by radar. But they found out it could be detected in inclement weather. Pride is the same way. You don't know you have it until it's raining in your life through trials. Some people, you're not even speaking to people. Why are you not pride? Some people, you're not even forgiving people. Why? Pride. Some people, you're mad at some people because you didn't get the promotion. Pride. Somebody say, humble yourself. Solomon said to the Lord, I am but a child. Please give me an understanding heart. Give me wisdom that I may do what? Lead your people. Do you know that's what I pray for? God, teach me. Give me the words to speak into the hearts of your people today. And the word that he kept put in my spirit, believe. The only difference, I did it last week, the only difference between people is what they, the only difference between people is what they, the only difference between people is what they, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. If you would take me please, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. You will find in this scripture, how do I know what a person believes? How do I know what I believe? How do I know what I believe? How can I get around you and find out what you believe? How can I predict the direction you go in? How can I know, because that's the goal, my goal is to get better today than I was yesterday. My goal is to become more and more the person that God has called me to become. Am I right or wrong? How do I know? Knowing that he who raised up the Lord, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. You had it up there first. Thank you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, somebody shout out faith. According to what is written, I believed, E-D. What is that? Can't hear you. What is it? And therefore, can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Now, people confuse believing with faith. They're not. Any more than tails and a head on a coin are the same. But they both must be intact for it to be legal tender. If it is defaced on either side, it is no longer legal tender for currency. 
faith and belief are the same. When I say the same, they must be in conjunction for you to see anything happen in your life. What do you mean, pastor? Let's say I need someone who's malnutritious real quick. I need someone that's malnutritious real quick. I need someone that's malnutritious. Can somebody come up here who's malnutritious? Can I get someone to pretend you're malnutritious? <laughs> Can I get someone? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I got one right here. I got one. Come on, come on, come on. Quick, 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 quick. This is a malnutritious young man, all right? Come up here. Come on. I got you. All right, so he's a little sickly. He gets here, and he's not feeling so well, and he falls down, so he's on, a, he's on the floor. He's malnutritious. Go down, go down, go down. Now, I want you to know what this means before you leave here. I want you to know how this works with faith before you leave here. The only difference between people is what they believe. Some people believe only based on their experiences. There are some people only believe things based on what they've experienced. You will have such a shallow and limited life. One of the reasons I go places, Pastor T and I go places, I take my children places, I take them around certain places, around certain people. Y'all know why? Because there's a way you can expand what you believe. That's why I noticed some, some places here in like people grew up in the city, they didn't leave the, the six block areas. When there was a whole nother world six blocks away. So you know what I want to do as your pastor coach? I want to encourage you, get out your six blocks. There's another world outside of where you are. And I want to encourage you, take a trip. Well, they don't let me over there. Yes, they do. Just when you go over there, don't do nothing wrong. He's sick. <laughs> then we get a doctor. Dr. Kelvin, where are you? Come on, doctor. Come on, doctor, real quick. I need a doctor. I need a doctor. He's malnutritious. He's, 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 he's been ailing. And then we get a doctor. Is there a doctor in the house? We got a doctor coming. He comes, and that doctor comes, take, take a look at him, and he come examine him. That's what Dr. Kelvin's going to do. He's going to examine him. We're still talking about right here. I'm still helping you through a picture get belief. <laughs> so Dr. Kelvin is examining him. He's examining him. Everybody got me? Now, Dr. Calvin's diagnosis is going to say, Pastor Aeneas, <laughs> Pastor Aeneas, the diagnosis is, this man is malnutritious. Matter of fact, if we just get him a meal, if we just get him some food, he's going to live. That's what he tells me. If we just get him some food, He's going to feed, he's going to just feed him. I don't care if it's intervening, however we do it, all he needs some food and this man will live. So now I got somebody, Lorraine, come here. I didn't call y'all for a reason other than I just saw you. <laughs> so Sister Lorraine, beautiful dress by the way, come on. Sister Lorraine comes up and she's bringing some food. So Sister Lorraine has food, but no, we put the food right there. Then we say to him, do you believe that if you eat this food, you're going to live? Y'all heard what he said? Yes, sir. All right. Now, remember, now Dr. Kelvin says, Pastor Nias, this is urgent. We got to get this food in him right away, right away, right away. But we can't force it down. We can't force it down. But we got to find out. Pastor Nias, we got to do it right away. So now a minute gone by, and then I come back, food's still sitting there. And I say, Young man, do you believe if you eat this food, you're going to live? He said, yes, sir, right? So guess what he has? He believes that if he eat this food, he's going to live. And his words, because I believed, therefore I, his word says, yes, pastor, I believe if I eat this food, I'm going to live. Now Dr. Kelvin said, Pastor, you only, got a, you only got like 30 seconds, Pastor. And I said, young man, do you, do, do you believe if you eat this food, you're going to live? And you say, yes, 30 seconds up, boom. He's dead. Right. He just. <laughs> 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 Y'all 
two sides of the coin. He, in fact, believed. He never acted on what he believed. Faith without Young people can do this in school. God can put it in their hearts. I want to get straight A's. Write it down. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you to help me. Give me the understanding to get straight A's in Jesus' name. And you know when they do that, you know what they got to now do? Start doing what I see my son and daughter. Shine and lads be up like all night, like some of y'all kids. And guess what they're doing? They put an action to what they believe. They put an action to what they believe. Well, black people and white people just don't get along. I don't believe that. They got some colored folk that don't get along with each other. So the color of the house has nothing to do with people not getting along. But there are people that believe. Yes, sir. What you believe is what you're going to create. Don't let anybody fool you with religion. What you're currently experiencing is the surest indication as to what you believe. I'm going to say that one more time. Listen up. Listen up. Listen up. Listen up. What you're currently experiencing is one of the surest indications of what you really believe. Because you're acting on what you believe. And what you've acted on is what's causing what you see. If you believe in Jesus' name, my debt is being paid for. Romans says, oh, no man, nothing. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I'm asking you, help me get out of debt in Jesus' name. And then as you do that, the Spirit of God will begin to give you a plan or give you a person. And as you act on that plan, act with that person, and they coach you, guess what you're going to end up? Out of debt. Somebody say praise the Lord for that. Two sides of the coin. Jesus told a man, he says, if you believe, all things are possible if you believe. So you know what I monitor? I, I monitor what I believe. I pay attention to this. I listen to these thoughts that come to my mind. And the only way, now, some of y'all say, I can't, Pastor, you can't stop a thought. The devil is a liar. You may not can stop a bird from dropping something on top of your head, but you certainly can stop them from building a nest on top of it. Now, why is this important? You got thoughts repeatedly coming to you. And this wise man Solomon says something. Because this right here, this is in the heart. You know this how you got saved? I'll read in a second. This is how you got saved. God looks on the heart. He told the prophet Samuel. Man looks on the outside, but God looks on the heart. Now, I'm not talking about what you believe up here. I'm talking about what you believe in here. Got a lot of people believe a whole lot of stuff up here. It's called mental ascent. But they never get it in here. You know how you get it in here? It's the words you speak. It says the pen in Psalms, the, the pen, he says the tongue is a pen of a ready writer. So how you're created, the words you speak begin to form an imprint in your heart. Whatever's in your heart is what you and I are producing. Think about this. This is why you get mad in religion. This is why you get mad in church. Because people don't teach you this stuff. Or they don't make sure they go back over it to remind you. You're responsible for your life. And you can change your situation. And you are created by God and anointed by God to change whatever you don't like in your life. If you will stop blaming other people, if you will take personal responsibility, if this nation is going to change, it's going to change because the believers decide we're going to love and not use our words with this foolishness of destructive talking. And since we have the same spirit of faith, we have the same spirit of faith. Somebody say, I have the same spirit of faith. According to what is written, 
You don't always want to pay attention to what's written. I is personal. I. Spouses sometimes want both to agree. You don't need both to agree right away. You just need somebody to agree with the Lord in that relationship. And somebody that could believe. I hear people say, well, you know, God can't change anybody's will. Let's see, Jonah. There are ways to change your will. Remember, everything works for God, including the waves, the wind, and the water. Now, God is sending signs to the world. Pay attention. Rumors of war, earthquakes, famines, fires. All those are signs to the world. We're supposed to be listening to what we're supposed to be doing. The signs are there, family. You got to be blind not to see them. Hold up. The God of this world has blinded the mind of unbelievers, but not yours. That's why we don't panic. Of course these things happen. But we want to hear, God, what do you want us to do? Certainly not badmouth the president. That couldn't be the antidote to change it. Certainly not start building African-American communities only and then Caucasian communities only. Couldn't be that. But he will have you to have a conversation with somebody in your heart. He'll prick your heart, co-worker that you hadn't talked to for whatever reason. Go talk to him. Why? Because he wants to bridge a gap. And if you do it a person at a time and enough people begin to do it, guess what we do? We change it. Look at your neighbor right now and say, I don't know what you're waiting for, but you be the change agent. Come on. Now, you said that casually. I don't even like the way you said that. And then they got some that said it. You don't even believe it. But for those believers in here, because... The effectual, fervent, hot and juicy prayers of the righteous are very much. Some of y'all prayers not answered because you really don't want it answered. But when you want it answered, you like a mother whose child is under a car. Homegirl will get, the, get that vehicle off her child. Am I right, ladies? Am I right, ladies? fire department, anybody, I don't care who on the way, you're going to find whatever you need to find out, you're going to get this car off of my baby. When you start getting hot and heavy and desperate, God, you got to answer this thing. This is a mess. This is a mess, God. you got to do something and start with me. Change me first. We're always praying for somebody else. Change me so I can change this. Help me see a bigger picture. God, move in us to begin having conversations. Help me to pray for law enforcement. Do you know we can't afford law enforcement to be getting killed? And I hear some of y'all right now, but they're killing some amount of people. Listen to me. There are 370 million citizens. Yeah, I think there are probably less than a million law enforcement in the country. Did y'all know that? There are 370 million citizens. And we got roughly about 900,000 people that are police officers. You don't think we need to be praying for them? That they get trained right? That when they do go through these confrontations, they get the proper uh, whatever post-training they need? Come on, family. Because I don't care what you think, when it all go well, guess who you're going to call? Come on, you come with your NWA all you want, but you're going to call the police. 40 and over. 40 and over. Come on, let's give Lorraine, Dr. Kelvin. Give me your name again. Derek. And Derek. Little Derek. Thank you. Come on, we can do better than that. <laughs> Leading cause of death is heart disease. 
is the final thing I want to end with you. Please pastor your own heart. This is so important. This is so important. If I want to get a believer off course, go to um, Galatians, please. Thank you, Lord. Galatians chapter 4, I think it is. Try verse 7 real quick, please. You ever seen some people just on fire for the Lord and then all of a sudden the water looks like somebody's poured water on them? <laughs> ever seen that? Has it ever happened to you? Yeah. What has happened to that person? Usually somebody has been talking to them or they've been listening to somebody. I'm sorry, Galatians chapter 5, verse 7. Thank you. Galatians chapter 5, verse 7. It's about running your race. Before I get to Galatians chapter 5, verse 7, I, I was talking about, I get, get a chance to get out and greet, talk to you guys before service, and I was talking to one of our members. Some of y'all may not know, I run Art Hill periodically, like Art Hill in Forest Park. And for some of y'all, we just need to have a field trip for some of y'all. Because some of y'all don't go anywhere. You haven't been to the Ark, the Arch. You haven't been to Forest Park. This is like new to you, all right? And there's a river, like right over in Alton. I'm telling you, we're going to start having trips. You're going to get out your comfort zone. And some of our seniors talking about I'm not riding on the highway. Okay, we're going to get a bus and take you on the highway, all right? You're going to continue to live. You're going to enjoy your life around here. Somebody say amen to this. All right, so I was talking to one of our members, and I run Art Hill, and one of our members serves in the park. And they, they always see me running Art Hill. So somebody just told me what they told them. So they say they saw me run the hill, so they decided to go run the hill. <laughs> so the report got back to me. They went up one time and thought they were going to have a heart attack. <laughs> What's the parallel? Before you get up here, if God don't train you to make sure your heart right, you're in trouble once you get here. I wish I could tell you what the Lord has brought, allowed Trace and I to go through before I ever got here. If you're a person that don't know how to forgive people, you don't want to get here. If you're a person that really don't know who you are, this is not the place for you. Like you're trying to get affirmation. And people liking you, and you, you, you derive your confidence because people say your messages are good, this is not the place for you. If you haven't been hurt by people who are close to you, stay seated. And if you can't stop loving and understand just human people and that we all got some area that we're working on, and then when you do blow it, acknowledge it, and love people, don't blame people. If you don't, don't get here. Some people want to be a Joseph. He had to deal with the envy of his brothers. He has a calling on his life. His brothers don't understand. They hating on him. Then he gets sold out. Then he ends up getting lied on, falsely accused. Then he goes to prison and still blessing people and they forget about it. Not knowing that there is a process that God takes you through, people. If you're seated here and you're mad at somebody for not, you're not getting promoted, you mad at the wrong person. Because last time I checked, Jesus said, the Bible says, Proverbs, promotion comes not from the east nor the west, but it comes from the Lord. You mad at a person? You got problems with Jesus. That's why I love being a Christian. I realize God could now help me to not be subjected to the whims of human beings. In other words, if this thing was just set up where people had to do right by you, all of us in trouble. Because most people are going to treat the people they like well. But when the Lord says, if you'll do what I ask you to do, I'll begin to touch people's hearts who don't even like you. I'll begin to bless people, bless you through people who can't stay in you. Because you know what he says? I'm bad and I'm God all by myself. 
And if you would just do what I ask you to do, I got some stuff for you nobody can stop. You don't need everybody liking you, just the right person. I'm so glad out of all the ladies, I wasn't all that cute anyway. I'm just glad Pastor T, Pastor T chose me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't need all the women liking me. I just need the right one. Now they, now they got some cats, they still want all the women. You can't handle one, all right? <laughs> Let's close this out. Galatians. He said, man, you were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? In other words, you were doing a good, ride, good job in your race. That's why I'm, I'm real careful around people. I was in two churches, Pastor T, probably over the past 20 years, besides this one. One in Arizona and one here. I never got around people talking about the pastor. Especially leaders. No, we don't have a come to Jesus meeting. I don't get with my brothers talking about my parents. Period. Why? I want to stay running well. I know how the enemy comes in and diverts the heart. I know it. That's why as a shepherd, I try to encourage people. Be careful. Here's what the wise Solomon says. Above all else. Somebody find that scripture for me. Guard your heart. For out of it flows the issues of of life. What's that scripture? Somebody give it to me. Come on, Almanac. Last scripture we're going to go to. Somebody got it. Proverbs 4, verse. Come on, guys. Proverbs 4, 423. Go to there, please. Last one. Do what? Who's to keep your heart? Can't hear you. You got to keep, keep your heart right on the job. You get around the wrong co-workers, talking about your boss, the person that signed your check. Who has to keep your heart? Can't hear you. Keep your heart with all what? For, for out of it spring issues of life. Who has to do that? Children. Guess what you have to do towards your parents? Keep your heart. Don't let somebody trick you to have a hard heart toward the people that put a roof over your head and food on your plate. The devil is a liar. I got to keep who has to keep it? Keep my what? Keep my what? How did you get saved? Romans 10, 9. Confess with your heart. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your It's all about the heart. Last revelation. What's in your heart, everybody shout this out. What's in my heart will determine now, will determine now, will determine now. Take the T off of heart you get. What's in your heart will determine how you hear. What's in your heart, listen to me. Like if they got people backwards with a pastor, like they've been upset with a pastor in the past, a pastor has disappointed them and they don't make sure their heart's right, they'll come here. They'll hear things I'm not even saying because of their heart. Wives and husbands, you got to watch your heart because your heart determines how you live. You got to constantly guard your heart. Everybody not prejudiced? Everybody not prejudiced? Some people got preferences. That's not prejudice. 
Everybody not mean. Everybody not trying to get your money. There are a lot of people that really care about you, but if your heart not right, you will hear everything the wrong way. Because what's in your heart determines how you. That's why the Pharisees never could receive Jesus. Their hearts weren't right. So everything he said, they questioned and they refuted. Because what's in the heart determines. Y'all know what I hear doing this, this divisive time in our country? I hear unity. I hear we're more than capable of solving it. I can't wait to coin a letter I'm going to send to the NFL owners and the commissioners. I know we can change this stuff. I know we can work together with players as partners. I know we can move the needle and get this stuff changed without television, putting sound bites and stuff that pit people against each other. I know better. I know when we act adults. Something is wrong with the adults acting like the child. My voice don't have to get loud with my children. There's some other things that talk. I know some of y'all don't believe in that. I still do. I'm just talking about chasing it. Chasing it. Everybody got me? What's in the heart determines what you... Come on. This week, this week, pay attention to your heart. Pastor your heart. See, they didn't speak. They don't like you. That's not true. They weren't even thinking about me. You got to pastor your own heart. See, every time, every time, every time I come to work, he look like he mad at me talking about your boss. She look like she got an attitude. That's because you've been late. You've been late. <laughs> we lost our mind. You've been late. Why they got to have a parking spot? Why they got to have a parking spot with their name on it? It's their company. <laughs> you done lost your mind. <laughs> you chose to work for them. Amen. Everybody say, Pastor, your heart. Pastor your One heart. more time. I'm just tired of my sister. She don't trust me at all. You haven't paid her back. <laughs> Pay the girl back. This sounds deep, doesn't it? Pastor your own heart. Pastor your own heart. Eat this food. I know you're feeling bad. Eat this food. No, I'm not going to eat this food. I will no longer medicate my heart through food. No, I'm actually going to go deal with this. I'm going to call that person up. I'm no longer going to avoid them. I'm going to pass them on heart and have this, this conversation. You know, when you came in, you said this, you said, you know what, all you people are like this. I didn't like that because I felt you were grouping all people together. I love the dialogue. Notice what I did. I passed them my heart and then I went back and had a conversation. If you, I understand your heart behind it, but when you group people together, it causes division. Really what maybe you could say is, you know what, sometimes I see this behavior in people because the behavior could be prevalent in any race. What did I just do? I caused harm in you, and I pastored my own heart. Did you receive this morning, family? I said, did you receive this morning? Come on, let's give God a praise in this place. Thank you, Father God.